I came to New York City in 1971 to study organ at the Juilliard School. And pretty soon after that, I started playing for choruses. I played the organ for choruses. I started playing organ for some of the greatest choral conductors in the whole country. People like Greg Smith and Roger Wagner and Margaret Hillis and people all across the country. And they introduced me to a new world. And that world was the professional choral world. And uh, it changed my life. In 1981, I was hired as organist and choir master of Church of the Ascension, where we are right now. Now this church has had a, a famous choral program ever since around 1900. So I had at my command a fabulous professional chorus that I was able to develop and build over those years and do great repertory. And we started developing quite a reputation. By the end of the 1980s, I think it's fair to say that the choir of Church of the Ascension uh, was already one of the finest professional choruses in the United States. And then a watershed moment occurred. I put on a festival of the music of Maurice Duloufle. Now back in 1977, I had lived in Paris and I studied with Dorfle's wife, the very great virtuoso organist Marie Madeleine Dorfle. And some of my uh, lessons were in the Dorfle's apartment with Monsieur Dorfle off in the kitchen while I was playing for his wife. And so that became a uh, very central repertory for me, Dorfle's music. And this festival was a very big deal and Madame Durfle came and played in it. And so the press for this festival was exceptional. We got lucky, the New York Times had a feature article on, in their arts and leisure uh, section and they reviewed every single concert. It was really amazing. And the concerts were broadcast across the country and across Canada and uh, our reputation was made. So the Durfle Festival was responsible for launching the incorporation of Voices of Ascension. Also around that time, 92, 93, another watershed moment came for the organization. And that was when we were approached by a major recording company, Delos International. The first recording we made for Delos was called Ave Maria and that's because it had Ave Maria's in it. It was mostly Ave Maria's and other pieces in that sort of mood. And it sold like crazy and got phenomenal reviews in all of the major newspapers and trade journals. After we made that, the distributors said, uh, you know, could you make us a, a follow-up album with these Renaissance pieces. We love these two Renaissance Ave Marias you have. How about a whole Renaissance album? But something happened. Angel Recordings came out with a CD. They recorded these monks in Spain singing Gregorian chant. And they put a new age pop packaging on this recording and they called it chant. Well, it was a phenomenon everybody bought chant. So I got a call from Carol Rosenberger and she said, Dennis, you know about this recording chant. Well, we'd like to get your Renaissance recording out right away. And don't laugh, but we thought we'd call it Beyond Chant, Mysteries of the Renaissance. At any rate, Beyond Chant was an enormous success and it was on the Billboard charts for almost a whole year and uh, one of the greatest selling choral recordings of the 1990s. Over the years, we had other projects with Delos, so many. I'd have to mention our Durafle album as one of the most special ones because 
this is my home repertory. In 1999, we had our Lincoln Center Alice Tully Hall debut with the Monteverdi Vespers, and it was sold out two days before the concert. Since then, we've been at Tully Hall many times. We've been at Carnegie Hall with the San Francisco Symphony. We've been with mostly Mozart at Zonkel Hall. We've sung with Mark Morris Dance and the Jose Limon Company. And we even performed on the Today Show outdoors in the plaza of Rockefeller Center. And let me tell you, it was five degrees Fahrenheit that morning that we performed. And you could see the hot air coming out of the singers as they did their pieces. One of the most rewarding collaborations we've ever had have been our years with the Sorel organization, which promotes women in classical music. It was led for many, many years by our dear friend, Judy Cope, who passed away last year. And over the years, we have uh, done premieres and commissions of dozens of women composers. And this has been very, very satisfying for me personally. And it's given an opportunity for these very, very gifted young women composers. When people ask me what makes Voices of Ascension special, I think it's that our ensemble has a concerted effort to reveal the meaning of every piece that we do, to demonstrate the vision of the composer. And when we get in the concert, we try to live in that vision, and we invite the audience to join us there. And when they do, when everybody in the room is united in this vision of a great piece of music, well, that's when those special moments occur. You know, when, when time stops and you get transported someplace else. And that's why it's been so difficult for us during this COVID time, which seems endless, because we can't do what we do. And we miss all of you, the audience. We, we can't share what we do. But we will get past this, and we will come together when this is over. And what a glorious day that will be. And once again, we can come together into the vision of a great piece of music and experience the power of music. <laughs>